Hey y'all, I'm Jessie Pearson and I teach art journaling here at Let's Make Art. And today I have a fun project for you and it's a Frida collage. That's what we're calling this project. Um, so what we do here with art journaling is we give you a prompt and a technique, um, a couple of those cards, and you can mix and match them however you want. And then I choose to, to go together and make a project. So the today's prompt is find your guide. And what that means is who do you admire the most? Maybe you could try journaling about that. Think about what it is about them that you think is inspiring and make a page around it. I find Frida inspiring. So I wanna show you this technique that we're gonna do, enhance a drawing with collage paper with her. But you can choose to do whoever you like. So you can follow along with this project and do Frida with me, or you can think about someone else that's meaningful to you and do that page around them. Um, if you want more help with finding an artist, that, um, or learning more about artists, or if you don't know who Frida is, you wanna learn about her. We have this book that we also have on our website called Women in Art, 50 Fearless Creatives Who Inspired the World. So in here. Quick disclaimer, our artists are not yet in that book. Just stand by. <laughs> no, these people are pretty incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Um, Frida is in this book, and I want to give you a little context about who Frida is. Um, she's known for her many self-portraits, her bold unibrow, her love for Mexico, um, which is her homeland. Yes. Do you want to push the book up a little bit? Oh, further? yeah. Can I they see it now? That way we can see my whole page. This book is illustrated, so it has like an artist illustration on the side, and then like a little white write-up about them here. It's a very nice book. I think it's fabulous. Sorry, go ahead. I, I keep interrupting. You're fine. This is Keenan. if you haven't been watching um, was, tutorials with us before. He's here in the background. He's awesome. He's our, um, he likes to call himself a hype man, but I like to call him our cheerleader. <laughs> okay, so yeah, she's known for her bold unibrow. She's known for um, bold colors in her homeland in Mexico. Um, she suffered polio as a child and nearly died in a bus accident as a teenager. Um, she focused on painting while recovering, and she had a lot of intense life experiences, and all of it is in her work. Um, she made more than 140 paintings, a third of which were self-portraits. So I think it's kind of fun that we're going to um, sort of pay tribute to Frida in this project. And we'll learn some cool techniques, like I said, that you can apply to um, other people if you want to try um, that. Okay, so first step that we're gonna do is Dispense our paint. Dispense the paint. So we're going to use some pink. And in your subscription box, you may have gotten Deco Art paint or this Vicky Boone paint. They're both great quality. So that's what we're going to start with is getting some paint here. So this is pink acrylic paint, orange acrylic paint. This is a good method. Red. That Method way you don't of, have to keep washing that brush out. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just show you the paint here. Okay. And then we're also going to use a Posca pen. This one's the red one. And a white one that's got like a skinnier tip on it that you can see here. You may need an X-Acto or a pair of scissors. Um, some collage paper. This is what the collage paper looks like. We did previous projects, so some of it's cut out, but that's our collage paper. You might enjoy having an extra piece of paper to write our little quote on, like we did here, and paste it on separately. Um, I like this oval mop brush, but you can probably use whatever brush you have on hand, and um, I like this round um, brush What are, brush what as are well. those brushes? Of, is it a brand? Oh yeah, these are Princeton Select. Ah. They're great for acrylics. I love the blue handles. Well, and it helps to keep them separate. So if you're already doing watercolor tutorials with us and you want to keep your acrylic brushes separate from your watercolor brushes, the blue will help you not get confused. Smart. I like it. Okay, so we're going to start out with um, doing this outline with Frida that you would find in your subscription box. But if you want to use another image of someone, you are welcome to do that. And express yourself with whatever guide that you want to use. Do you want to push that up a little bit? Oh, yes. Thank you, Keenan. Okay, so this is what we're doing here. And I have some graphite paper, paper that um, comes in our Let's Make Art Matter postcard that's also in the subscription box. And now we have this little sticker that says graphite paper inside in case you can't find it. So 
I'll get this out. Graphite paper is so great. So I'm struggling to get this out. Got a cello bag. <laughs> okay. So you want to use the shiny side of this paper facing down like this. So not shiny, shiny. This side is going to go down like that. And if you want to tape it in place so it doesn't slip, that's always a great idea. I'm just using painter's tape because it's easy to take off afterwards. I'm going to push this out of the screen, but when we start mixing, you can ask me to bring it back in because I'm sure I will forget. Okay, so I'm going to put Frida on the left side of my page because I like that she's looking in and that kind of draws our eye in to the page, but you can do whatever you like. I'm just going to get this lined up here. Okay. I'm just going to loosely tape it there. That's enough to keep it in place. I think that'll be just fine. And let's see. I'm going to use this yellow pencil just for tracing purposes so you can see kind of what I'm doing. Now, I would say don't press too hard because whatever you're doing here is going to show up on the other side and you want a light outline. That really helps. Um, so we'll just lightly trace this. And this is something we can just zoom through. Okay, so now that we have this traced, you can see I kind of did mine a little farther than the left than I did this one here. Um, so it's helpful for you to make one mark when you're on there and kind of lift it up and see if that's where you want it. But we will roll with this. It is just fine. We're professionals, so. So you can go back over it with a pin if you like. I think I'll leave it this way for right now. Um, and drawings like this always look a little funny when it's just the outline before you add the dimension to it, and that's fine. So don't worry. Keep moving. It's going to be great. Okay, so next we're going to get our brush wet. I'm going to use a good amount of water um, with this acrylic paint so we get sort of more translucent kind of um, paint going on here. That's the joy of using acrylic paint. You can use it super thick or you can water it down and kind of get a... Um, more watercolor kind of looking effect. So we'll put a little orange in here, here. I'm gonna mix a little pink. Do you wanna pull Can that you see down where I'm just mixing a little paint? bit? Yeah, oh. there you go. So you can see I'm just using a little paint, little. And if you're worried about getting your paint on your previous paper, you can stick a little wax paper or something like that there. I didn't bring any for this, but um, I'm okay with that paint getting on there because it's a similar coloring. But if you're worried about it, you can use parchment paper or wax paper or whatever you want to protect that other page back there. I like to use parchment paper. Yeah? I think it might be wax paper. I can't tell the difference. So we're just getting paint on there. You don't have to be precise about this. We're just having fun. Just getting a little color on there. These are some of my favorite color combos. This pink and orange, like yeah. a sunset in Missouri. Michael did the last tutorial with me as a camera guy, and yeah. he said a similar thing. He's like, those are sunset colors. Yeah, they are. Nice warm colors. I think I was sort of drawn to it since it's so dang cold here. It is. <laughs> It was nice a couple days ago, and now it's cold again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that just kind of helps get a little color on there. We'll work back into this in a little bit, but that's looking good. And I kind of like having a little white space up top. We'll see what we'll do with that. Okay, 
So you want to let this dry for a second so you don't get back in here and try to work on it. So we'll let that dry. Give it a second. Okay, now that that's dry, we're going to set this aside for a second and we're going to start doing the collage thing. So I'm going to show you something that I think that is helpful. So for this outline, it's pretty loose. You can cut the paper however you want. You don't have to get too fussy and it will look great. But this technique might help you if you're trying to do another image that's a little bit more intricate. So I'm going to bring my, can you see this well? Um, right here. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to put my collage paper down here. And I'm thinking about this hair right here that she has, um, that little piece. I want to get this black right here. Um, and I want it to be really similar to that shape. So I'm just going to take my graphite paper and my image. So fun. I'm going to, and I don't know if that's how well this is going to show up on camera, but I'm going to turn this a little bit. And I'm going to look there and I'm going to say, yeah, that looks like there's enough space for the black to show up. Maybe we could even, well, we'll do this. So I'm just going to press down on that paper and hopefully we'll get a good line showing up for this little piece. It's like just thinking about a puzzle. This is a piece of the puzzle that we want to cut out to fit perfectly in that negative space of her hair. And there it is. It's probably hard to see that black outline, but it's there. It's tough to see. Can you see it on the side cam? Barely. Okay. It will probably show up more when you're not doing black, so that's okay. So now that I have these outlined, I'm just gonna trim them out with an X-Acto. And they should fit pretty darn perfectly into the negative space that we wanna put them in. So there's that one little piece. that will fit right there. You could also just paint her hair black if you want, but I just wanted to show you this. this is so is that fun? That's way fun. Okay, and then we'll do the other piece. You could also use scissors, so it's an option. I like to turn my paper to make cutting easier when I'm cutting with an exacto, but you can do it however you want. Just avoid cutting yourself. And I would say that keeping your finger away from the blade is the way to avoid cutting yourself. Um, but it's pretty much just drawing with a knife. When I was a Boy Scout, I got my, I don't remember what it's called anymore. It's like a totem chit, I think. Chip, I can't remember. It's for when you handle knives. I got mine taken away because I didn't know how to handle knives properly. Oh, well, that's so I, an I wasn't allowed to have a knife. In life. Did you learn that after? What's that? Did you learn how to handle a knife properly after that? Mm. Yes and no. My dad always has a pocket knife on him, and he was very great at explaining to me how to be careful with it. Grateful for that skill that he taught me. Okay, so here's our little piece. That doesn't seem like very much, right? Like, it's kind of a weird shape. But look at that. Oh. Kind of cool, right? So you can do that with any of the pieces that you have going on here, but we'll just set those aside for right now. And maybe we'll choose some, um, some shapes for the clothing so you can kind of see that show up more. Set this over here for a second. All right, let's, let's look at getting maybe this. Let's see, I did. We'll do a little bit of this shape right here. Okay. So I'm going to take my pen or whatever you got that you want to use to trace. And like I said, you don't have to do it super hard. But for this, we want it to show up on camera. So we're going to do it where you can see it really well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Graphite paper just requires pressure, correct? Yes. Okay. Just double checking. Yeah. Pen, pencil, or you could even use like the your Apple Pencil, which doesn't actually make a mark unless it's on the device. Okay, so same thing. Can you see that outline, how the graphite paper just gave you a little line? Yes, yes. The same as when we did it in our journal page, but now we're just doing it on collage paper to get shapes. Cut this out really quickly. 
I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just kind of fun to get the general shape in there. So now, we've got that piece. Kind of cool. Boom. <laughs> All right, so we'll do that for a few more pieces and then we'll put our puzzles together. Now that we've cut all those out um, and with that technique and like I said you don't have to get that fussy I just wanted to show you what you can do if you really like the idea of that technique now that we have all of our puzzle pieces my hands are really cold back here <laughs> warm them up um, we can put them in place now it's you can still winter here and we're still suffering in the dungeon uh, studio <laughs> so you can kind of see how that's going to work. Like, whoop, it's tricky, you guys, because it keeps moving until you put them down. So what our next step is going to be is we're going to use our yes paste. So I'm going to move all of my pieces over here. And I'm going to get this part ready first. Oh, got a little paint on the back of that. That's OK. So you can use a paintbrush to do this water it down a little bit if you like. Sometimes I get nervous about um, the paper getting too wet. We're just going to use a little bit of this. Can you get this on the side cam? This Do me. you actually want to push that up farther, like the whole kick caboodle? Okay, yeah. is that better? Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so we're just doing a thin layer of this with a palette knife of this Yes Paste. This was like the easiest way I could get everybody glue and a subscription box and not have to have the subscription box be like super expensive. But you can use whatever you like. If you're more comfortable with a glue stick, you can do that. Um, whatever your preference is. But I kind of just love this stuff because it um, is a really slow drying. So it gives me time to work and then I don't get stressed about like, it's gonna dry and I'm not gonna have it ready, especially in a scenario like this where you're trying to get these little pieces to fit together. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're having fun. That's the important part. Okay, so I'm looking for that little... <laughs> the challenge of this is like not losing your pieces in your lap or right in front of you where you thought you were looking. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've had like one more piece of collage that I wanted to do and I couldn't find it anywhere just to get up and see it fall from my lap onto the floor. I'm like, oh, that's where it was all along. Got a little piece of paper. <laughs> Oops. All right. Sometimes it's like, wait, that doesn't fit. Oh, God, turn it around. That's looking good. All right. And this guy, this little piece right here is going to be next. This is an intense puzzle. It kind of is. Do you like puzzles? I, yes and no. You know, because it's just, it takes time to make, to finish. I like the two to six-year-old puzzles. <laughs> Did it have really big pieces? Those I can, yeah, I, mem I memorized those. Those are fun. Six to eight pieces total, you know? And if their pieces don't fit together perfectly, don't stress about it. I'm pretty sure that piece is supposed to be there, and this piece is supposed to be here. So I'm going to go for that. Oof, got my hair in there. All right. I'm like a, somebody else is doing a puzzle. I'll walk by, look for a couple pieces, and then I'm out. I don't really get into those like really yeah, crazy the, the puzzles. Really intricate ones, like the three D ones, are crazy. I'm just like that's cool for like a minute, and then I'm like squirrel. What else? Squirrel. What just happened? But if it's a part of my art project, I'm all oh yeah. In. Well, if you make the puzzle like you're doing right now, yeah. How then sweet is that? I'm in. Plus, there's only like you know 
This would be like a 10 piece puzzle or something. Yeah, exactly. Not, not too complicated. No. The complicated thing is just not having my fingers stick to everything. But this, if you get too much glue on your hands and you're sticking yourself to everything, you can just wet your hands in your paint water that you got available probably right next to you. And then they won't be sticky anymore, which I may have to do in a second. But right now it's helping me pick up the paper, so. You guys, this is so fun. I loved doing this. So cool. Now, because my Frida ran off the side of the page, I might have to trim this little piece after I put it on, but I'm just gonna stick it on there for right now. Okay. I was just thinking of all the different ideas that we could have for a guide for that prompt that we have is like find a guide. It could be someone in pop culture, it could be an artist, it could be someone in your family. This would be really fun to do with a family photo. I was thinking it'd be cool to do like my grandpa and uh, maybe do a, a quote from him. I don't know if I have any quotes from him. To do my dad's, my dad's dad, he would call me a nincompoop and to take my hand out of the chocolate jar. Oh. Oh yeah, he was good, he was good fun. Nice. <laughs> I remember my mom introducing me to my great uncle on her side of the family, my uncle Doug. And she was like, Uncle Doug's like to tease, so um, watch out for him. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So then he comes to pick us up at the airport or whatever. And he was like, hi, I'm your Uncle Doug. Do you want a mint? And I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because my mom told me to watch out for him. And he was so confused. He was like, what did I do? <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> no, thank you. But he, I remember hearing stories when my brother went to Canada to stay with our family out there and um, they were painting I think the porch or something and my brother trying to go inside to get a glass of water or something stuck his hand next to the door um, before he went in to like open the screen door or whatever and he got paint on his hand and Uncle Doug was like yelling James stealing the paint or something like that because he was just a jokester you know but I wasn't having any of that. I was steering clear hint. Uncle Doug sounds like good people. He had this bright flame red hair too. He was just something else. And he did not like people calling him carrots. Okay, we're missing this one little piece right here. God, dear. Where'd it go? Is it in my lap? All right, so we found a piece for that. Nailed it. And we got to get our hair in place. It's blowing away here. Let's see. So we're going to do this piece, that piece, glue it really quickly, then we can move to the next step. I should do this where you can see what I'm doing here. There you go. If you get glue on your work surface, the good thing about this is it just washes off with water so feel free to use your cutting mat or whatever to do these pieces because it is easy to wash have you ever seen the movie iron giant no what sorry oh no well now i can't even reference it well you could explain it to me if you want Maybe in iron giant in the that. beginning the main kid hogarth who was the main reason if I ever had a son, I was gonna name him Hogarth, which I realize now is not a wonderful first name. But- Or is it? It could be, I don't know. But Hogarth was watching a scary movie while his mom was at work, because as kids do when their mom's not home, and the bad thing, the enemy, is a brain-sucking brain, and it looks just like Frida's hair that you just cut and glued. <laughs> it's the same shape. Well, my goodness. <laughs> I had never watched scary movies when my mom was at home because I was too scared for that. Okay, so your um, clothing for Frida might look different. Remember, you could use your water to clean your hands if you need to. It's sticky. It's great. Okay. I'm going to quickly outline 
my drawing. And then her eyes look a little funny because we haven't um, put in the dark spot. So when you're doing this, you might want to just leave a little highlight in the eye. I think we might need a little zoom. Okay, let me zoom in there a little bit. On that left eye, or right eye, whichever eye that is. She's looking good. Yeah, sometimes you just, when you're tracing a drawing, you might lose the depth of the piece. So you just got to go in there and see what feels right. It's going to look great no matter what, but. So it looks like there are some pieces I might want to just fill in some paint here and there. Okay, so next, let's get some color on these flowers before my paint dries in my pan. <laughs> and just water it down a little. So I'm going to do a red one right there. And you can think about like, do I want two red ones touching or do I want them to be all separate? It's your painting, you do what you want. I kind of, I'm okay with the two of them red touching, then maybe I'll do two 100s on the side of that. This guy right here. And this one can be orange too. And then I want a big pink one. Oh, and I think I collaged the leaves on this one, but you can outline it or collage it or paint it, whatever you like. If you have a different color paint, you want to do leaves, you could do that, or you could come back and do some collage. I'm going to leave it for right now. Those are pretty. Yeah, thanks. Oh, and I want to do pink earrings with red dots. I think that'll be fun. You can make your earrings whatever color you want. This one, it helps to have this little bit smaller brushed could use a round six or a round eight or even the smaller detail or whatever you like. You gotta let that dry for a second. While I'm letting that dry, I'll just do a little touch of red. Then I'll do my little detail of the lips. Oh, I think I want a little more watered down. Maybe we'll do pink on the necklace. <laughs> then we'll have to have a minute for this to dry. Then we can go back and do our details with the Posca pin. And then we can add in our flowers and our quote. And we'll be close to being finished with this. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to dry a little bit more, let's work on the quote that's gonna be on the opposite page. Now, Frida Kahlo said a lot of really great inspiring things but I think my favorite thing that she said that I included here is at the end of the day we can endure much more than we think we can which is encouraging to me so I'm gonna try to write that out right here at and I'm just using um, 
Funasuke pen, you can use whatever pen you want. It's your favorite black pen, it's fine. And I like the idea of making the we can be the one that stands out, so I'm gonna make that big. Mm. Emphasize we. Yes, thank you. I was like, what is that word? We can. And then ending it with we can again. It's a great quote. At the end of the day, it's good. Um, so I just have it um, sort of rounded off here. And I wanted to show you that you could do this on a separate paper because sometimes you can get so far into a layout where you're like, well, if I write on it and I don't like how I wrote on it, then I'll ruin it. And I don't believe that's the case, but if that fear is keeping you from writing a cool quote in your journal, then do it on a separate piece of paper like this, cut it out, and then put it on there. And then you'll know you're all good to go. Just a good trick. Pro tip. And of course you can cut this out with scissors. I just happen to have an X-Acto right here. and I like to draw with a knife, so it's fine. That's not scary at all. <laughs> It's just as easy to cut it with scissors. Okay, so got that ready for right here. This should be dry now, so we can put that right there. But I want to have some flowers on this page, so I'm going to add those quickly. And these can just be loose and fun, like just the idea of a flower, not like too crazy. Do one over here, peeking out over his shoulder. Maybe one right here. If I'm going to put this piece right here, then maybe we do one right here. I don't always plan these things out, but you know, if you're feeling it. Oh yeah, do one right here. This is what I did originally. I kind of like that. Yeah. I think I'm gonna water this one down. Maybe this one will be a slightly pinker flower. Right in here. It's lighter, maybe it's a little blurrier or out of focus. Yeah. That's kind of fun. They call that bokeh. Oh, yeah, maybe. Like that filter that makes those little dots yeah. on that are light refractions or something. Yep, sounds good. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Yes, you do. I don't yeah, know that I do. <laughs> you guys, I just get so happy when I get to work on my journal and the time just passes by and then I'm like, man, how. How did that happen? <laughs> That's when you know you're having a good time, right? When you're just in it. I'm gonna add a little pink into that I one. think when you lose track of time doing something you enjoy. No, I said that too soon. It's much easier to lose track of time when you're doing something you enjoy. <laughs> and I agree with what I said. <laughs> I agree with that. Thank you. I just wanted to do something loose and easy so everybody could feel like they could do it. You can get as detailed as you want. I just want you to have fun making this. Okay, so while that part's dry, I'm gonna turn this upside down for a minute so I can work here without getting my hand wet on the paint. And um, I'm gonna fill in a little bit of black with our hairline right here just with my pin. 
Just these little finishing details, and you can decide however you want to do it. So you can bring that to the left a little bit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to outline these. The lines for the flowers, and then with our last finishing touch, we'll get our white Posca pen and do a little couple of dots in there. I think that would be fun. Your Frida might look a little different, and that's okay. Because you made it, it's yours, and it's going to be awesome. I have multiple journals I work in because I get impatient about things drying. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well that's drying. I'll work on this other thing. So that's an option for you too, if you are like me and you have a hard time waiting for things to dry. Because ultimately, I end up sticking my hand in there and getting it all crazy, which is fine. It just gives it a little more character. Mm -hmm. Character. Okay, fill in that negative space. Oh yeah, this is this is turning out pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna use my red Posca pen. I'm gonna do a couple dots on those earrings. So is this a good spot for that on the camera? If you want to push it up to the right a little bit first. Right there. Yep. Just a couple dots. Then we'll take our white pen and we can do a couple of dots on our flower. You can do a lot of dots, a little bit of dots. It's up to you. I think this might be dry enough for me to put a couple here. Mm -hmm. Living on the edge, making mm -hmm. making marks where it might still be wet. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, we can do it. Well, I hope that you've had fun making this with us. The last step will be to put this on there and we've got a finished layout of Frida. Um, I hope that you had fun making this um, with us. I would love to see what you made, whether you chose Frida as your guide in your art journal and you followed along exactly with this, or if you branched out and tried something new and used a different um, image. We want to see that too. We have a Facebook group um, that we share uh, our work with. It's an awesome community, lots of really supportive people, beginners, cheering each other on, a lot of fun, and it's called Let's Make Art Journals. That's all I have for you today. Thanks.